In this example, I'm going to show you how you can use third-party APIs with Google Sheets and pipe that data right into your After Effects project. Now, before I begin, I'm going to go ahead and hit preview here, and you're going to see that the Twitter status updates and this handle updates, and then it also Templator handles the layout rules. So I'll hit preview again, and we're just going through the rows of our spreadsheet. Okay, so if we take a look at our spreadsheet itself, we can see here's all that data. We've got this Twitter handle column, we've got this status text column, and then we've got this subheader column. Now, let's say I want to grab the status of a different handle. So instead of Adobe AE, let's just go ahead and change this to Adobe. So you can see that Google's kind of thinking, and then it pulls in the latest tweet for this handle Adobe. So what's driving all of this is something called Google App Scripts. So if I go up to Tools and I do to go to Script Editor, it's right here already, you can see that I've got my code that has custom functions that allow me to populate my spreadsheet cells. So here on Follower Count, you can see that when I click on a cell, I've got this Get User Followers and I'm passing in this cell. And then I get this data. Here, I have this get user status function and I'm passing in the handle and I get this data right here. If you're not comfortable coding and you don't wanna learn all that, Google Sheets allows you to have something called uh, an add-on or uh, you know, scripts that you can just buy and you can actually search for them. And there are some out there that allow you to pipe in data right into your, uh, Twitter data right into your spreadsheet. So for example, uh, instead of getting the latest tweet, you might wanna have your data on your sheet pull in a set of, let's say, 50 tweets with a certain hashtag. And if you're at a live event and you want to you know, put up some video of you know, what people are saying while the event's going on, this could be useful for the, something like that. So real quickly, let's just take a look at how you know, this is kind of rigged up. So obviously we've got our name uh, matching our columns here. So status text is here and then Twitter handle is right here. And then these two layers have the templator settings effect applied to them. And you can see that the Twitter handle, if we bring up this and let's scoot this over a little bit, you can see that this is attached to status text on the bottom edge and it's got a padding on the bottom edge. So no matter the size of this text layer here, this text is always going to be attached to the base of this text layer. So status text right here, if we take a look at this, uh, oops, um, and we go to layout, I'm looking at the drop shadow, sorry. Um, you can see here, we don't have an alignment, nothing's going on, um, and you know nothing's actually happening, but it's important to have this templator settings so that it gets the data. Now, you'll notice that this Twitter logo is actually following this guy. So if this layer, you know, which is just, if I hide this, you can see that the Twitter logo is not part of the text layer. If this moves, this Twitter logo is gonna move. And the way that's achieved is pretty simple. Uh, basically, you've got a EPS file that I've imported, and you can see that it's got the templator settings effect applied to it as well. Now, a layer doesn't necessarily have to have data piped into it, but Templator can look at a layer that has its settings and you know, apply design rules to it. So in this case, the Twitter logo is attached to the Twitter handle, and it's attached on the left edge of the Twitter handle. So if I zoom up, you can see that you know, if I select the Twitter handle, uh, you know, here's the left edge, and if I select this Twitter EPS file, this right edge of the logo is going to attach to the left edge of the Twitter handle. And then I've got the attach padding set to 15. So, you know, if I increase this, let's say to 25, and I did preview, you're going to see that, you know, this kind of moved over to the left a little bit. So let's actually bring this up to like, you know, 75. So you can really see the difference. I'm going to do preview here. And you can see now it did follow it, but it's now padded uh, with 75. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, playing with the rules is kind of a, 
a nice thing to do. Like it's um, useful uh, for you to kind of iterate on how the rules behave with all the different data that comes in so that, you know, by the time you're actually performing a batch process, you'll know what to expect. So, you know, iteration with the preview function is, is key to having a great uh, or a well-designed target composition for when you render out. So real briefly, I'm just going to, you know, preview and then render this out just so I can see how it behaves on a per row basis. 